Hello, hello and welcome everyone. I hope you see me well and here too. Uh, I slightly changed my microphone set settings and let me know if it too quiet or too loud. Today we are talking about scheme and guideline particular. Uh, I would like to give very practical introduction to Guile language and cover all the basics that is necessary to write uh, code for Geeks Package Manager and Geeks System. Um, part of the talk will be applicable for uh, other uh, scheme dialects, but uh, we will be using um, Guile as our primary tool today. Let me check that op sim stream works. Uh, one second, just checking checking that everything is okay. Yep, looks good to me. Please type something in the chat. Uh, it will help to understand that you see and hear me. At least someone. Okay, let's go back to uh, our scheme tutorial. We will start from very basics uh, and uh, we'll take a look how uh, Guile projects are organized in most cases. It's very high level overview. Yep, thanks a lot, Kishav. Um, and First, most important part uh, of uh, Guile um, is model system. Your project organized uh, in many different files and each file uh, should be attached to some uh, model. And after that, you set load path uh, and it says to Guile interpreter and compiler uh, to look for uh, source code in those directories. And for example, uh, I will take a simple file uh, which will be in uh, here is uh, my RDE project and uh, I will create a file inside RDE directory and inside system directory and we'll call it minimal.scm. All Guile files will be uh, will have SCM extension uh, and compiled files will have Go extension uh, like from Guile objects, I suppose. Hi Dmitry. Okay, uh, and at the beginning of each uh, file we define uh, which model uh, it uh, declares and here uh, it should mimic uh, the path and as you saw uh, rd slash system slash minimal dot scm uh, and it's very similar to other languages uh, and to namespaces features for example in java you also have uh, to have uh, the path of the file to be equal to the model it declares okay uh, that's it about models and a uh, few words about load pass. You can set load pass as uh, environment variable and uh, type something like uh, RDE uh, system uh, or okay, uh, you, you, you should uh, set the root of uh, your project uh, as a load pass. For our case, it will be uh, work RD directory right here. And after that, every Guile co command will be evaluating uh, its input uh, according to uh, our source code, uh, which we declared in our models. Uh, that's mean uh, right here, I can import uh, models I declared uh, somewhere. For example, our simple model, 
I will check if it's saved. Yes, it's saved. Uh, and no code for model here. Uh, inside any uh, scheme file, you can type run guile and it will start a REPL uh, right here. Let me kill the previous REPLs to be sure that everything will be evaluated correctly. Okay, one more time, uh, I start run guile and if I will try to evaluate this file, everything will be good. Uh, I can type something here and you see uh, it will give me a result back. And now it has history uh, and also it has some after completion. For example, I type tab and it shows all possible functions uh, and so on. Also some uh, go to definition and other stuff uh, works too. Uh, also another option that uh, we can use uh, is to evaluate uh, expressions inside text file. Right here I can type Ctrl X, Ctrl E and we'll get the result of uh, evaluation right here in the left corner. Hi Christian, uh, you can watch the stream later, uh, for example download it, uh, the, the recording of the stream uh, and watch it without internet. Yeah, it is a stream, but the recording will be published a few hours after, after the stream. Good. Uh, now we set uh, all our tools uh, and ready to explore actual language. Okay, let's start from the basics. Uh, as uh, every uh, as a language, almost every other language. It has very basic types, for example, strings. And strings evaluates to itself. And actually we can pass those strings to some functions. And as you can see here, uh, it will interpret uh, backslash n uh, symbol as new line, but everything is usual for uh, almost all uh, modern programming languages. Yep, ho hope now it works uh, better. Uh, I also had some problems with YouTube at the beginning and couldn't start stream properly and also had some problems with uh, adding load pass for my guile interpreter. <laughs> okay, mm. after strings we can talk about uh, booleans. There are two uh, special symbols like uh, sharp T and sharp F which uh, true and false respectively uh, and uh, keywords. Keywords is you can think about them as uh, constant strings, uh, which are useful for few purposes. Uh, you can use them as enum values, for example. In many languages like Ruby or Clojure, it's used as uh, often used as uh, values for in, uh, enums. But uh, in Guile and Scheme, it mostly used for keyword arguments which means that some function uh, can have positional arguments. Uh, sample, fun sample function uh, argument one, two, three, and some keyword arguments like uh, which has to have some meaningful names, for example, uh, with uh, or mm, I don't know, number of elements. And for this purpose, you can use keywords. Keywords evaluates to itself. Uh, and uh, you can compare them. Uh, it's very uh, low cost object uh, and very nice to use. Also, you have numbers as in many uh, basic 
modern programming languages. Uh, you have floats, you have uh, integers, and uh, also you probably have uh, something uh, more interesting like, like rationals, but uh, it's not very important because you rarely, rarely use numbers uh, inside uh, Geek's code. And also characters, you also rarely use them, but uh, just will uh, show you that uh, characters using this notation sharp backslash and the character itself. Um, okay, it's uh, about basic types that will be useful uh, during writing a configuration or something else. As expressions. Uh, as expressions is basically a way to represent lists, uh, which is a basic building block of each Lisp language. Uh, actually, the source code uh, is li li uh, list of lists itself. For example, here you can see that we have list and first element of this list is define model uh, and it has nested list, uh, which has few more items inside it. Uh, and basically all the programs is just a uh, nested lists and those lists represent an abstract syntax tree which uh, will be used for compilation or interpretation by guile uh, utility and uh, before talking about a list in more details let's talk about pairs uh, pairs is something that uh, represents two uh, items and uh, it can be accessed. Uh, you can access first element of the pair and the second element of uh, the pair. Uh, and also, uh, you can construct a list using pairs. For example, uh, like that. You make uh, another pair, which is a second element of the first pair, and uh, as a result, you are getting a list uh, and uh, you can use another notation, which uh, allows to construct list, uh, lists easier uh, without uh, nesting those pairs. Uh, but basically, uh, you can think about lists as a, uh, just nested pairs. And uh, you can access both pairs and lists using the same functions. For example, I can access uh, first element of the pair using car and uh, the second element using CDR functions. Uh, and the same works for lists. Oop. That's it. Mm. Okay. Now uh, let's talk about uh, small syntax sugar that you saw here. Uh, why I need to use uh, quote uh, before uh, pairs and lists? Uh, it's because if I type uh, a list without a quote, right, uh, r uh, like right here, uh, it will try to evaluate uh, the expression inside uh, those parentheses. But if I don't want it to be evaluated and I want uh, to uh, treat it just as a list or pair, I uh, quote it. That is why I use uh, a quote. And also uh, if I want Okay, about unquotes, we will talk a, a little later. Uh, and let's go uh, to the functions. Uh, as you already saw, probably it will be better if I make it a little bigger. Uh, as we, you already saw, uh, to call a function, uh, you just create a list, and the first element of the list should be a function, and the second uh, and other elements of the list will be uh, arguments of this function. And right here I call the function plus on two arguments one and two. And uh, it's actually uh, a function with variable number of arguments. That is why I can pass three or more arguments to it. Uh, 
uh, but it's applicable for every other functions. For example, display function works absolutely the same way. You can see that it outputs hello here. And to make it a little prettier, let's add backslash n at the end. Uh, the same approach, we uh, create a list and uh, first element of this list is a function and the rest uh, elements of this list is arguments of this function. Basically uh, everything about the Lisp code is just a nesting list in proper order uh, and And to make it a little easier to manipula manipulate this li th those lists, um, there are a few more uh, functions that helps uh, to create lists. For example, a function list, which accepts any number of arguments and returns a list. Uh, it's uh, almost the same as declaring it uh, like that. Actually, quote is uh, just a special uh, syntax for a quote uh, call. Uh, quote, quote is not exactly a function, it's probably a macros, uh, but uh, it works absolutely the same as quote uh, character, but it's a little longer to type. That is why uh, most developers, scheme developers, use quotes instead of uh, quote uh, like a full name of uh, it. Uh, and another way to create a uh, list is using cons uh, asterisk function, which uh, accept any number of elements like a list function, but also it accepts a tail of uh, that list. And uh, it will look like that. Uh, that takes first three arguments and uh, adds them at the beginning of list provided as a tail. The same way uh, you can create a pairs using cons function and uh, it's very the same to this notation, uh, dotted notation for pairs. And another uh, useful function that you will find uh, all over the Geeks um, source code is append function for lists and uh, it looks like that and works as you may expect. It just joins two lists into one list uh, and pretty useful and very uh, often used in Geeks source code. That it about basics of uh, the uh, scheme language and everything else will be just uh, usage of such a concepts. But there are a few more already implemented uh, things that are important to talk uh, about that relies on those basics but looks very different from those basics. Hi Rui, uh, what do you mean by car and CDR problem. Okay, another uh, important thing of uh, Lisp language and most of the power uh, full features of it is macros. Uh, macros is basically a function, but it operates not on the values, but on the source code. Uh, as you saw here, uh, we can manipulate list, join them, uh, maybe remove some elements and so on uh, using uh, some functions. And we also know that all the source code is list lists too. And that means that, for example, we had our 
plus uh, one two uh, expression which oh it's actually pretty expected that car uh, gives a rise on empty list because it doesn't have uh, first element uh, but thank you for noting it uh, I think it may be very helpful to many people uh, now I don't want uh, it to be evaluated that is why I will quote it with uh, a single quote and now it will return a list of three elements and now uh, what I can do I can take a first element of this list and it will be a plus function and what is also very interesting I can take this first element and apply oh for some reason I can't apply it to other arguments probably because it uh, interprets uh, its as a symbol and I need to call another function to take a value of this function but uh, as you saw I can take uh, any element of the list and manipulate them and what basically macros uh, do it takes some source code manipulates it as uh, lists change uh, the order and maybe add some other values uh, and return another source code which actually be will be evaluated and uh, you won't uh, notice a difference when you're using a function or macros in most cases uh, but taking a look at source code will help you understand which one is which uh, and uh, despite the powerfulness of macros uh, I would suggest you to use functions uh, as much as possible and rely on macros only in rare very rare cases where, where it's really needed because uh, macros uh, makes debugging of the code uh, much harder uh, because it hides some complexity inside it and uh, it evaluated compile time uh, and uh, it, it will be hard to track the error because uh, you will be debugging not the code that you wrote but the code produced by macros but you see the code you wrote it is probably one of the problems of the macros uh, that you don't see the uh, macro expansion in most cases and to debug such code you need to macro expand your macros first okay about quotes second parts, uh, part quasi quotes uh, and unquote and splice uh, what we uh, can do also with um, quotes for example we have one two three uh, it's list but uh, somewhere here I want uh, let's take our example with um, plus one two and right here you have a plus uh, and it's a symbol but uh, I want to be it a function not a symbol that is why I will use quasi quote and use unquote on plus function and uh, right now you can see that procedure uh, returned in instead of plus symbol actually the most uh, important basic uh, item in the language that I forgot uh, to mention is symbols I will put a link to the article later to the notes uh, for my stream but here you can see that for now it re returns a slightly different thing previously it was plus one two now it's procedure plus uh, blah 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 arguments of the function uh, and one two it's actually a signature 
of plus function, which says that it has uh, as many optional arguments as you want. Um, what happens here? Uh, quasi quote uh, or backtick works almost the same as quote. It stops evaluation of the list and it makes interpreter think of it as a list, not as a uh, as expression that should be evaluated. And uh, the difference that you can use unquote or uh, comma, you also can use instead of uh, comma unquote like that and it, it will it should provide the same result but probably probably I did something wrong uh, okay uh, we will be using a comma here and now uh, as I mentioned in previous example I can take a first element of this list which will be a plus procedure or plus function car takes a first argument of the list and uh, the list contains plus procedure one two I took the first argument and that's mean right here I have a function and I want to, to apply this function to uh, two other arguments three and four and here at the, at, at the bottom you see it uh, prints seven and that is how you manipulate your uh, scheme code using quotes and quasi quotes and unquotes and uh, one more interesting feature of quotes and unquotes uh, is uh, splice unquote splice unquote is almost uh, the same as just unquote, but it flattens the list inside it and adds it uh, to the same level. For example, if uh, I do something like that without splicing, it will uh, say that it is a list of uh, four elements, plus one, two, and a list of three more elements, like that plus one two and another nested list but if I use splice and quote uh, it will flatten the list and adds it to the uh, elements of the current level and it will became just a list of six elements plus one two five six seven and uh, that's pretty much it about uh, quotes uh, it's very important important mechanism to writing macros and also it's quite useful when you're operating on just lists and uh, want to mm, manipulate them somehow uh, you can see it also very often so somewhere in geek source code and uh, Yep, uh, one uh, one uh, thing that I not covered uh, with functions. Actually, I didn't cover quite a lot uh, with functions, and let's go back to them and discuss some important parts here. Uh, we didn't discuss how we declare functions. Uh, we declare them in following way. Uh, we say uh, lambda and uh, provide arguments and uh, the body of the function uh, our lambda function will take a and b arguments and uh, will subtract b from a and to apply this function we can uh, wrap it in one more nested list and provide some arguments uh, and it should be 7 and 12 and it will be minus 5 uh, as expected the value of this call is minus 5 and you can see it right here at the bottom works quite well but uh, it's anonymous function uh, which doesn't have any name 
but if you want to attach some name to the function, we need to use uh, define uh, macros or whatever it is. It depends on the implementation of the language. Um, and let's call it subtract, subtract. And now we have a function subtract that we can use for the same purpose. And now it subtract uh, six from 12 and we get six as a result, which is pretty cool. But there are another way to defining, fu defining functions. Uh, we can use following notation, subtract, um, and provide arguments, subtract to a, b, and uh, provide the body for the function, a minus b, minus b, uh, and subtract to function will behave the same way, but let's make it uh, work a little different. It will be subtracting uh, a from b. And now uh, we can use our subtract function 12, 6, and it should return minus 6. Minus 6 as expected. Uh, it's basics of uh, defining and using functions. Uh, and now let's talk why we need uh, those functions and how to um, apply them. For example, uh, I want, I have define a list uh, of few values and uh, having this list I want to know the sum of this list. I can take a function ma map. Uh, okay, le le let's first uh, make every element of the list uh, to be increased by one. For example, do we have inc function? No, we don't. Um, but we can create our own inc function. Uh, for example, using lambda which accepts one argument and returns this argument increased by one and we will provide a list uh, map is a higher uh, high order function uh, because it accepts a function as a first argument and a list as a second argument and it iterates over all the values of a uh, list and applies this function to each element of the list. And let's see the result. And the result will be two, three, four, five, seven. Uh, just the same list, but each value increased by one. Okay, uh, what else we can do with higher order function? For example, for now we want uh, to take this resulting list uh, with increased values and calculate the sum of this list. We will use fold function which accepts plus as uh, th the function which takes two arguments uh, the previous result and uh, the next value of the list and operates on those two values and uh, provide a result. That should unbound variable fold. Okay, probably there there in some special library. Give me a second. Uh, it's called sr use models srfi srfi1. Okay, uh, now wrong number of arguments to fold uh, and yep fold accepts four arguments uh, three arguments uh, three or more arguments uh, first argument is a function accepting two values the uh, second argument is initial value and the third argument is a list uh, and right here we use a plus function which can accept two arguments 
views zero as the initial value of our sum and provide a list which we want uh, to calculate sum of. And as you can see, after evaluation, it returns 21, which is the value of, uh, which is the sum of this list right here. Good, uh, and here how higher order functions uh, can uh, make our life much easier by combining uh, other functions and values and doing some very interesting uh, conversions or calculations just by using all the uh, basic building blocks. And it's almost everything that I wanted to talk, uh, to tell about uh, functions, uh, the documentation about how to define optional arguments or keyword arguments you can find in this document. It's the same as lambda and define, but with asterisks at the end. And also it use keyword optional or keyword uh, key. And uh, you can also provide default argument for optional arguments, uh, default value for optional arguments and default value for keyword arguments. Uh, optional arguments are positional. That's mean you set first argument, second argument and optionally set the third argument. And keywords arguments are uh, also optional, but uh, to set them, you need to use a keyword buzz. That's mean that for such definition, uh, you will call this function like op, frob12 uh, and buzz3, something like that. Uh, and maybe, maybe optional argument here. That's it about functions. Let's go back to our uh, slides uh, and let's talk about records. The another uh, frequently used construction of scheme language and uh, maybe some other Lisp dialects is a uh, record which is uh, something similar to structures in C language. And here we are talking about SRFI 9 uh, records. SRFI is a standard which declares uh, something that should be uh, the same between different scheme dialects. And uh, SRFI 9 declares very basic records, which allows uh, to create objects which has some fields and getters for such fields. Uh, let's, uh, we won't be creating new records. We will take a look at real records that are used in Geek's uh, operating system. And for that, we can uh, add one definition, uh, use models. The another use case where we use keywords is in define model, uh, we use keywords to export functions and other objects from uh, different models. Uh, I have experience, quite a lot experience with closure language. It's a Lisp dialect, but it's very different from scheme and common Lisp. Uh, I have few months uh, of experience with Guile uh, during implementation of Geeks Home and uh, I would say Clojure is much more modern and much simpler uh, as a language, uh, not as a mm, platform because it's based on GVM and Clojure script dialect based on JS and uh, it's quite complicated and requires a lot of interoperability, but uh, many uh, things uh, are much easier in uh, Clojure because, because it's much younger language with much more um, 
uh, cool features like built-in hash maps and all the data structures are immutable by default and everything else um, and much less legacy uh, that is why I would say as a language uh, closure is very interesting and uh, more expressive than scheme language but uh, talking about scheme language it's more consistent than closure language in terms of syntax and other stuff but uh, it's less expressive and requires much more uh, code to express the same ideas but uh, still a viable option I didn't have uh, a much experience with common lisp because uh, from common lisp family uh, probably uh, I used only emacs uh, for some time uh, and as I just looked at, at them and didn't have much experience but I will mm, explore this language as well common lisp I, I mean uh, to get understanding of how it works and what uh, basic ideas behind uh, it uh, I find them uh, both common lisp and um, scheme a little more complex because they cover uh, some use cases uh, in a very verbose way uh, while closure mm, do it a little better and more expressive closure is not perfect at all uh, too uh, but it's I think a step forward in right direction uh, and maybe the next language that I will really like will be somewhere between uh, scheme common lisp and closure uh, having all immutable uh, data structures and more consistent syntax than closure and maybe some ideas from uh, other Lisp dialects uh, which will make it very expressive uh, very uh, simple simple in terms uh, that there is no uh, hard and complex things that you have to learn and master before you start using uh, the language you just need to learn a few concepts uh, and after that you are ready to go and apply those concepts uh, to all your uh, tasks and you can care about the tasks themselves rather than language I think, I, I think it's a very long answer but I hope it gave you some understanding from my experience and my thoughts about Lisp family languages uh, okay uh, talking about um, records for example in closure you don't have records uh, there are hash maps which uh, covers all the needs of the records actually there are records by they uh, are not used in any uh, modern project as I know and in most cases uh, hash maps is enough uh, to get all the same capabilities of the records or almost all the same here you can see the definition of uh, a record it uh, has a constructor mm, a predicate which allows you to check if this a record of this type and fields and field getters uh, and that's pretty much it about records you just create an object uh, you define fields of this object and you can access those fields using those getters and also you can optionally use provide the setters but in most cases uh, in functional uh, paradigm you don't want to mutate objects that is why in gigs uh, there is no much uh, code that use setters and uh, instead of setting uh, the values uh, of s some fields you just inherit uh, and create new object with the same values but uh, with few fields uh, having different uh, values 
and uh, if we started talking about inheriting uh, those records doesn't provide uh, such capability and gigs uh, implemented uh, their own uh, records and here we can take a look uh, at gigs records uh, Geeks records provide a macros called uh, define record uh, type asterisk. Oops. Uh, and it's basically they uh, works the same way as SRF i9 uh, records, but it has inheritance and few additional properties for the fields. Uh, it has default values for the fields fields and mm, few flags that makes those fields t fields behave a little different uh, you can read uh, about those properties here in documentation uh, the only thing that we are really interested in is inheritance uh, and default values uh, other than that uh, they almost the same as SRF I uh, nine records and uh, using those uh, records there are a uh, few very useful uh, things in uh, gigs that you can use it's a GNU system which has operating system record and here you can see uh, operating system record uh, itself uh, operating system predicate with question mark at the end and a uh, few more functions for accessing different fields uh, of this record. Uh, some of them are part of a record itself and some of them are defined separately. But b because define record is uh, a macros, not a function, it can also define other functions and uh, most of those functions are defined automatically by operating system uh, record definition and here uh, let's operating system let's find the oh okay uh, here we uh, the developers of gigs defined operating system record. Uh, they s s said that make operating system is a, a function which constructs a record and uh, operating system predicate uh, and few fields with different values. Uh, some of them have, have default values. Uh, some of them have functions which calculate their values, but uh, most of them are just fields which contains and stores some values for future use in other functions. And uh, having this uh, record definition, we can use this record to define a new operating system. And we will say operating uh, system and we'll define some fields for it. Uh, for example, what we can define here. Uh, we can define services or packages. Let's define some packages. Uh, to define some packages, we need to provide a list of packages. As you can see, uh, everything that we use is uh, just lists, nested lists, uh, and also additional mechanism records. Uh, we're defining an instance of operating system record and uh, set uh, packages field to empty list for now. Uh, unbound variable. It's unbound because I didn't evaluate. Uh, what? 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 What did I? wrong use models oh 
Okay, uh, I'm just a little tired by the end of the day. It's use model in uh, define model. And now we have our operating system exported. Actually, yep, it's another important question. Here at uh, define model definition, you see a lot of use models. You have use models more precise, more precise use models, which uh, takes only a uh, few functions or objects from uh, from the model and you also see export keyword which says that this model which defined here provides uh, those uh, items when this model is exported mm, with use models or with use model in uh, define model also you can use define public to uh, get the same behavior, uh, what basically export do, it uh, makes uh, operating system public and available for other models to use. Okay, uh, we exported our GNU system and now we have operating system record and we create, create an instance of that record. And uh, now we see that it says it missing field initializers for bootloader, hostname, file systems, and time zone. Uh, not to uh, set them uh, by, by our hands. I will take the values from my previous uh, operating system definition. Uh, it says bootloader, hostname, file systems, time zone, locale, not necessary, uh, bootloader and file systems, bootloader. Uh, here we define a bootloader field and provide as a value bootloader configuration, which is another record which contains also some fields and we can go to the definition of this record but before doing it we need to know where it based it's probably somewhere in GNU bootloader how uh, to know where uh, the record defined Actually, I just grab uh, source code of Geek's repository, but uh, probably there are some more uh, smart options, but I don't know about them. Okay, uh, we, def we have our uh, bootloader configuration. Yes, no, don't know. Yep, uh, the bootloader configuration record uh, defined in bootloader, in GNU bootloader, but uh, the value grab if bootloader defined in another name namespace. That is why we need to export also uh, GNU bootloader grab. And now It should work. Uh, as you can see here, I evaluated uh, bootloader configuration form, like this form, and it returned uh, a pretty uh, big result, which uh, printed at the bottom, and it contains information about our bootloader configuration record, which we use as a value for bootloader field. And now we defined uh, all the fields except all the necessary fields which doesn't have default values except file systems and file systems uh, it's interesting which values uh, it accepts let's take a look at our uh, systems stm namespace namespace uh, file systems Or, uh, 
her right here list of file systems what if I provide an empty list here does it work yep I evaluated our operating system record and you can see the result of at the bottom it's very long because some fields uh, have default values uh, very big default values which calculates based on uh, maybe some different fields but at the bottom you can see all uh, all the fields will with all their values and for example here you can see set it programs fields field and let's take a value of this field as you remember there are some uh, uh, getters and uh, it's obviously a getter for operating system uh, set it programs which probably called uh, operating system set its programs and if you take uh, and pass our operating system let's actually define our operating system as define os operating system we defined our operating system as os symbol and we can pass this symbol to operating system set it programs getter and the value will be a list of programs that uh, have set it bits and if you take a look at uh, folder run uh, set it programs we will see uh, all those programs here all the programs defined here sh should uh, be present here uh, okay and uh, it's how you can debug your operating system uh, records by getting values of some special fields but uh, it's interesting enough there are some functions uh, which are not actually a getters but uh, other functions for example operating system kernel arguments uh, it's a separate function and we can take a look at, at find few more uh, functions operating system kernel file uh, and maybe some other functions uh, for example mm, in services namespace it will be uh, a function operating system kernel essential services or something like that essential uh, okay yep uh, here it is operating system default essential services it's a pretty big function which takes uh, values of operating system record fields uh, manipulate them uh, and return a list of services which will be used to build your operating system we have one more topic that we didn't actually two topics that we didn't cover today it's pattern matching and g expressions but uh, I think uh, we will cover them somewhere uh, in the future because we already is out of time today thanks a lot uh, that you joined I hope you enjoyed and see you sometimes later bye bye